class. Welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we're going to learn about midpoint and distance in the coordinate plane. So just a quick review, uh, a midpoint is the point in the middle of a segment. You can think of it as the point that divides the segment into two congruent parts, the, cut, the point that cuts it right in the middle. Um, I like to think about it simply as a point in the middle of the line segment between the two end points. So when we think about the midpoint formula, which we're getting into next, I want you to think more about the word midpoint, middle. Focus on the middle. And sometimes we can think of the middle of two numbers as the average. Now, a lot of students, when I say average, they think, oh, I know how to find the average. We add two numbers together and divide by two. Or if I have the average of five numbers, we can add five numbers together, divide by five. We learn average. So what I want you to do is connect that idea of average to the word midpoint. So let's look at the midpoint formula. If I have these two points here, A is at x1, y1, and B is at x2, y2, we don't know what those numbers are, we can find the average of those points which was going to give us our midpoint. So our midpoint, I'm going to make it MP, is going to be the average. So let's think. It's going to be a point, so we're going to have a coordinate point, x, comma, y. So we have our parentheses, x comes first and then y. And the middle of x1 and x2, the average, is going to be x1 plus x2 divided by 2. We take the average of those two x's. And then we take the average of the two y's y1 plus y2 divided by 2. And that's our midpoint formula. So if you can connect midpoint to the concept of average of the x's and the average of the y's, it should be a little easier to remember the formula. All right, let's go to the first example here. So find the coordinates of the midpoint of a, b, given the endpoints a at 5, negative 10, and b at 3, 6. So if I want the midpoint, I'm going to find the average of the x's. Remember, this is x and y, x and y. So first, I'm going to look at the x's and find the average of the x's. So I'm going to take 5 plus 3 and divide by 2 for my x coordinate. And then my y's, I'm going to take negative 10 plus 6 and divide by 2. So, let's see, I have 8 over 2 and negative 4 over 2, which gives me 4 and negative 2. And that should be the coordinate of my midpoint. Now, if we wanted to check our answers really quick, we could make a little sketch of this situation of A and B in our midpoint and make sure that it looks like it's really in the middle. So if I take A at 5, 10, and we can just, or 5, negative 10, we can just eyeball this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So here's negative 10, here's 5. So A is going to go right about there. Um, let's see, B is going to be at 3, 6. So here's 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Remember, this is my y axis, my x axis, so b is going to be here, there's b, so my line segment ab looks something like, oops, like that, pretend it's straight, sometimes I don't get it right on, right on the dot, but that's okay. All right, and then my midpoint's supposed to be at 4, negative 2, so if I go to 4, negative 2, that is my coordinate for 4, negative 2, and does that look like the middle? It sure does. So it's just a really quick way, and you can make the sketch as quick as you want just to make sure that you've got the right points. You always want to visualize it. All right, so let's look at our next example. Example two, given that M is the midpoint of CD, segment CD, and M is at four, negative nine. C has coordinates negative three, negative five. What are the coordinates of D? So this problem is going backward from what we just did. Instead of having two endpoints and finding the midpoint, we have one endpoint and the midpoint, and we need to find the other endpoint. Now we can do this graphically. 
and algebraically. And I'm going to show you both ways so you can see and choose whichever method works best for you. So graphically, let's draw our xy plane here and plot what we know. M is our midpoint. It's at 4, negative 9. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All right, so M is going to be there. And C is at negative 3, negative 5. Negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 5. So C is here. So if I connect those two, that's going to give me from C to my midpoint. So if we think about M needing to be in the middle of our graph, we need D to extend past that the same distance as from C to M. So D is going to go somewhere over here. And I don't know exactly where. I can figure it out graphically, though. If I know it needs to be the same distance, I just need to find how to get from C to M. So if I go, and I'm going to use red here to show my path, if I go from C to M, I went from negative 3 to 4, which is going to give me 7. And then I went from, let's see, my y coordinates were negative 5 and negative 9, so that's 4. So now if I go 7 again and 4 down, 7 to the right and 4 down, 7 and 4, it'll give me that same distance, and I can find D. So if I take M, which was at 4, and I go 7 to the right, I should end up at 11 for my x coordinate. And then m was at negative 9. If I go 4 down from that, I get to negative 13. And that's my coordinate for d, for my other endpoint. Graphically, we can see what's going on. We can use that graph to find our other endpoint. Um, if you don't want to draw a graph and you're more of an algebra person, Here's a kind of a way you can do it algebraically. I'm just going to draw a line segment, C, M, and D. And I'm going to put the coordinates. So C is going to be, uh, let's see, where was C? Negative 3, negative 5. M is at 4, negative 9. And I don't know what D is yet. I'm going to leave that blank. Now, I'm going to do kind of the same thing I did here. So I'm going to put my X's on the top my y's on the bottom. So if I look just from my negative 3 to 4, I want to figure out, okay, how much did I go from negative 3 to 4? That difference is adding 7. All right, so now if I want m to be exactly in the middle, I need to add 7 again to get my x for d, which is going to be 4 plus 7 is 11. Then I can do the same thing with the y's. So from negative 5 to negative 9, I subtracted 4. So to get my y coordinate for d, I would do the same thing. I would subtract 4 from negative 9, and I would get negative 13. So either way, if we do it graphically or if we do it algebraically, we get the same answer. All right, so going from, from midpoint, now we're coming into the distance formula. So the distance formula, um, if we have a graph and we need to find the distance of a line segment, this is in the coordinate plane, if the line is simply horizontal or vertical, so horizontal is this way, vertical this way, you can usually just count the distance or the length on your graph because you can count right side to side or up and down. But if it's diagonally, we can't really just count. We need a way to find the length. That's where distance formula comes in. So I'm going to show you two methods of finding the length of a diagonal segment, finding the distance in the coordinate plane. The first formula I'm going to show you is the distance formula. And this one you might want to um, go ahead and memorize. So distance formula, I'm going to use a D, equals the square root of, and I'm going to say that this is, let's see, x1, y1, and x2, y2. So x and y of my first point, x and y of my second point. My distance formula is going to be the difference of my x's, so x2 minus x1 squared, plus 
the difference of my y's, y2 minus y1 squared, and that's all under the square root. It looks like a pretty tough formula, but that's okay. You can, you can work on this practice makes, well, makes almost perfect. So here we go. We've got, let's plug in our parts. So distance equals x2 is going to be 4 minus x1 is a negative 2. Notice I have minus a negative, so be careful of those negatives there. I need to square it. Plus, let's do our y's. 3 minus 1 and squared. All right, simplifying this, 4 minus a negative 2 is actually 4 plus 2, which is 6 squared. And 3 minus 1 is 2 squared. So now I have 36 and 4, scroll down here, which is the square root of 40. Now, that, and now that we're in geometry, we always want to simplify our radicals. We can't leave it as the square root of 40. We need to make sure that we, if we can, that we simplify it. So the way I like to simplify, there's multiple methods. I like to break it down into the primes. So 4 times 10, 2 times 2, and 2 times 5. So I have the square root of 2 times 2 times 2 times 5. And then because it's a square root, I'm going to look for pairs of numbers that are the same. So here I've got a pair of 2s. Now I know there's another 2, but we're only doing a square root. So it's only two uh, pair of numbers. And one gets to come out, and then the other one disappears. So here I've got 2, and the square root of 2 times 5 is 10. 2 and 5 don't match, so I can't pair those guys up. That's why they stay inside of our square root. All right, so we found the distance is 2 times the square root of 10 using our distance formula. Now I'm going to show you another way. And this second method is actually my favorite method. I like it. It's, it's the same thing as the distance formula. It's just a little easier to remember for students. I don't know if you've learned the Pythagorean theorem yet. If you haven't, this is going to be awesome. Okay, so if you have learned it, hopefully this is familiar for you and it'll be a little easier for you as well. So Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And this works for right triangles. So with a right triangle, c is always our hypotenuse, a and b are the legs of our right triangle. So now if you look at our graph, I don't have a right triangle. So in order to use the Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to need to create one. So I can go from one point to the other point and make myself a little right triangle. Now, the legs of that right triangle are horizontal and vertical, which means I can just count the difference. Here I go from negative 2 to positive 4, so that's going to give me 6. And then I go from 1 to 3, and that's going to give me 2. Now I can plug those in, and this is my C value, my hypotenuse. I can plug them into the Pythagorean theorem. 6 squared plus 2 squared equals C squared. It's a little less complicated looking. Technically, it's the same thing, but it's a little less complicated. Now I've got, let's see, 36 plus 4 equals C squared, which is 40. Now to get rid of that squared and to get C by itself, which is really the distance I want, I need to square root it. So C is going to be the square root of 40, which we already found was 2 times the square root of 10. So either method, whichever one you prefer, as long as you show your work, I'm happy. Math is all about using whichever method is best for you. All right, and that concludes our lesson for today. So we've got midpoint and distance formula. All right, well, thanks for watching. And well, remember, math is fundamental.